Good evening, fellow YouTubers, doll men, doll ladies. I hope everybody's having a great evening. I just wanted to touch base on a subject, or actually on a on a person or a family that uh, the days before Christmas, their dogs were confiscated because they were out on they were tethered just like these with housing. Uh, now the temperature was uh, around zero or degrees or something like that, but the man had the double walled with insulation inside and a partition wall with, you know, the kind that you have to go in the house and then go in another little house that's inside of a house so that the wind can't even get in there. And, you know, there was straw, you know, bedding, all that in there. And the comments were just crazy, um, like I was evil for agreeing that dogs can be left outside like that. And um, that, uh, you know, just a whole lot of negative comments. I can't even, there's probably a hundred different comments on the thing, and that's just in a couple of days. But they seem to have it in their mind, and I don't know if they've been taught this, told this, or what. So I just want everybody to be aware that if they see dogs tethered, like this, at least that group of about 30 people. If they see dogs like this, that automatically means you're a dog fighter, in their opinion. And, um, you know, the man or the family had their dogs to where the passerbys could see the dogs. And which shouldn't be, there's, there's no tethering law in that county or city ordinance or anything um per, saying that you can't tether so they weren't breaking a law in that aspect um but it seems that a citizen can call and just say that these animals are neglected and all of a sudden your dogs are confiscated and you're facing charges based on just word of mouth and opinion from just someone that isn't even educated in how to keep these dogs and they fail to understand that a hunter someone that hunts hogs or anything like that um would have many many dogs and so they think that you should bring your dog inside every time it gets cold and they one said how could you leave a dog like that outside without co a coat and shoes and i replied you know it's got two coats a summer coat and a winter coat but they're just uneducated and they honestly fail to see uh, any other perspective or point of view other than their own. They uh, want to call you ignorant um, and I don't understand how I would be the ignorant one understanding both sides of the coin between working dogs and, and pet dogs or lap dogs or whatever um, and being able to see both sides and understand both sides. Whereas someone that only sees one side of the coin and fails to be knowledgeable about the other side or even understand or, or want to understand that there's different walks of life and condemning them automatically if that life isn't like their life. And I just, just be careful because I don't even know how to explain it really, but they'll take your dogs just over somebody passing by saying i pass by these dogs every day and i never see them eating well you know people only feed their dogs once a day sometimes twice a day i mean i don't live anywhere where it gets that kind of cold where it's like zero degrees but or negative zero or whatever but i feed one time a day now it's a it's a it's a good meal and in the winter months they you know get double feedings when it's going to be super cold but um i just this man now is facing charges of animal cruelty animal neglect or whatever and um he is fighting now trying to get his dogs back i believe it's decatur illinois macon county is that where i think it's at i don't know the guy i don't affiliate with the guy i just happened to see it and i thought i'd share it as an advocate for for this breed because the people saying we rescued 21 dogs or whatever it might be from a dog fighter and then they 
because they said they rescued it from a dog fighter, which he has not been convicted of anything, and none of them usually are, but they'll euthanize the dog and then say it was used in dog fighting and it could not be rehabilitated and no one asked any questions, but yet they're saying they rescued the dogs. Rescue does not involve death, in my opinion. If I rescue you, I'm saving you from death, not bringing death to your doorstep. And it's just, it's, it's just fucking crazy. Um, and as far as the comments go, they were judge and jury and already decided his punishment, which should be, there's a special place in hell waiting for him. And, you know, and how could I defend him? And I, first of all, I'm not defending anyone. I am defending the breed of the dog, not a person because it's going around everywhere. It's, it's going on everywhere and they're eradicating or this breed will be extinct if if things continue the way they are now. I mean, my dogs get excellent, excellent care. I'm probably the only one that don't even, you know, one of the few that just feed, that doesn't feed just kibble or whatever. You know, I, my, they get raw vegetables. They get, you know, fat in the winter months from the butcher and they get eggs and rice and egg noodles and, you know, mixed with, you know, a broth heated up you know or even just hot water you know 70 percent of a dog's diet or every meal 70 percent of the meal should be moisture or liquid or whatever so i always mix you know about eight ounces of, of hot water with with their food and whatever leftovers scraps tonight they had uh meatballs leftover meatballs so they're loving that but um we just got to educate the public that every time they see a dog tethered, it does not, a pit bull, I should say, tethered, it does not mean that person is a dog fighter. It does not mean they are neglected. Because it's cold, it does not mean they need to be brought in the house. It does not mean they need a coat and shoes. I mean, people are, I understand loving your animals because I love mine. I mean, I, I devote my life to, to my dogs. It is a, a labor of love, a true devotion. That even when you feel like shit, you're sick as hell, you got to go out here and take care of your dogs. And for me, it's discipline. You know, it keeps me disciplined. It keeps me walking the straight line. They've um, probably saved me from shit I don't even know that they saved me from just because I had responsibilities to take care of these dogs. And, um, I mean, really tethering to me is the most humane way to keep multiple dogs that you know you got people that raise catch dogs and they're going to be animal aggressive and they're going to have a high prey drive and things like that and you know they won't play well together so you have to always keep them separated you have to always keep them restrained it's for their own safety and for the safety of other animals in the neighborhood or in the in the surrounding area whatever you might want to say you know, me, my dogs aren't out here 24-7. I'm leaving them out tonight because I'm off work tomorrow, so I'll be here. I'm not really going anywhere, but, you know, over here is the lock-up kennels, you know, at night for nighttime. Um, but I'm just letting them, you know, I sprayed them out with bleach and all today, so I'm just letting them go sit there, you know, overnight, and then I'll rinse them tomorrow. But these people, I mean, I hate to say these people, but people that aren't educated in the proper way to keep these dogs they don't understand and all they know is what the media is telling them and i honestly think they think they're doing right by the dogs but you're gonna have people so scared to let anybody drive by and see their dogs that they're gonna start hoarding crates in a garage or in a barn or in a spare bedroom and start stacking crates and hoarding these dogs they'll be lucky if they get to see daylight 15 minutes a day whereas these exercise stations here these are exercise stations that's their kennel these are exercise stations for sunshine exercise digging holes um being a dog having fun getting dirty actually having some freedom i mean concrete floors will ruin a dog's joints they, I mean, I'm an advocate of dirt. That's another reason why they don't stay in the kennels 24-7. Plus, I would hate to be stuck in there 24 hours a day. 
I'd hate to be in one place 24 hours a day. These dogs, whenever I get finished putting most of them up and only have one left on the yard, I can turn that dog loose and he runs right to his kennel and jumps in it. He knows it's bedtime. They know that's where they sleep. And they love it. And I can tell they love it because they're not running away. They're not running away from their kennel. They're running to their kennel. They're not trying to break out because they know it's time to go to bed. And they know that in the morning when I open the kennel, they're not fighting me because they don't want to go on the chain. They're ready. It's like a child that's been in class and then the recess bell rings and he knows it's time to go play. That's exactly how these dogs act when I let them out of the kennels in the morning. They're ready. They hold their head up so I can hook the chain to them. I mean, people got to understand that dogs tether does not, pit bulls tether does not mean dog fighting. It does not mean they're neglected. It just means they're restrained for their own safety because people like that want to drive by and call authorities. It's, um, it's pit bull breeders or owners that have multiple dogs. We are under the scrutiny of everyone. Everyone else can have a scratch on their dog, but not a pit bull owner. If you have a scratch on your dog and he's tethered, oh my God, you're a dog fighter and you need all your dogs taken. And they'll be killed before you can even be proven innocent or guilty or whatever the outcome may be. It's just ridiculous. Um, like I said, I just wanted to bring awareness to this because of all the the hatred, the comments that, you know, and how they were already judge and jury and decided this man's fate without any, any, without a trial, without any evidence, just hearsay and opinions. And, um, I don't know. It just, it just worries me. It worries me, not for me, but for the breed. I mean, anyway. God bless everyone. Think about what I said about passerbys. Just looking at your dog and, and not knowing any better and getting the wrong opinion. All of a sudden, you might be in the hot seat. You know, this um this person started a GoFundMe page to help try to save his dogs to cover attorney fees, and you know I shared it on on the Warm Mouth Kennel Facebook pa page, and I just wanted to get other dog men, dog women involved that do know how to raise these dogs how to keep them from injuring themselves or injuring other people or saving them just from society these tethers right here these exercise stations they are saving them from society and it's a shame because they're loyal to to people and most people just want to see them destroyed it's unfair really so anyway it's getting dark and it's getting a little chilly so um God bless everyone. Thank you, all my subscribers. Um, even the negative ones. Uh, Lloyd, yeah, my curves are doing fine. Whatever the hell your name was. Yeah, all my curves are fine. And um, thank you for uh, for your opinion. You know, you. I don't know who you are, and I've never talked to you before. But, uh, you know, you treat people with a little bit of respect, then you might, you know. It goes a long way. You know, I don't know why people would want to make an enemy out of someone that they haven't even met. But, hey, Debo. But uh, apparently, they just needed more enemies because they got to know them. So, anyway. Thank you for all the positive comments and thank you for the negative comments. I appreciate that because it gives me something to think about. And um, the person, I'm not going to mention their name, but over in uh, Decatur, Illinois, you know, I've seen the dog houses. I'm a dog man myself. Uh, I don't know any more specifics and I'm not going to judge someone without the facts like a lot of other people are doing and uh, I'm just I'm not that type of person we all got our faults I was just saying the Bible uh, yet ye without sin cast the first stone we all got our sins I ain't judging nobody um, and you know what else like live your life the way it makes you happy just because I don't agree with it if it makes you happy, I'm down. I'm cool with it, bro. Be happy, you know? I'm not the type that says just because I don't agree with that lifestyle, you're not allowed to have that lifestyle either. Like, however you want to keep your dogs. You know, and what is funny is that passerbys that saw the dogs out in the cold that day, that called authorities because they thought that that 
person was neglecting their dogs. I wonder how many homeless people that was out that day that they just drove right by or walked right by or, um, you know, children that are, you know, being, you know, treated worse than these dogs. It's like, it's funny because there was this guy that had a, um, he was telling a story about his dad passing away two years ago. And um, it had been a couple of weeks since his dad passed. And this is the, you know, the guy that raised him. And he uh, asked his mom, or his mom asked him, he's like, she's like, you think we should tell the dog that, uh, that Danny passed? And um, the guy was, or the son was like, I don't know, you know, whatever you want to do. So she called the dog over and she um, sat sat down near the dog and said, uh, you know, Danny passed. And uh, it's like the dog, they said, you know, jumped up in the dad's favorite chair and then passed away that night. <laughs> and what was funny was he said, none of y'all said shit when I told you my dad passed. But when the when I told you the dog passed away, the whole room was like, oh. So he's like, man, y'all people treat y'all's dogs. You know, which you should always love your animals, but it's just funny because it's true. The, the room was quiet. You could hear a pin drop when he said his dad passed away two weeks ago or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was like two weeks or two months or something like that. But anyway, um, nobody said a word. But as soon as he said the dog passed away that night, the whole room was sighing. And, you know, and it was just funny because that's how that's how everybody is. You know, these dogs need a coat and shoes and all just to be outside at all I mean, they're animals I mean they are animals anyway I don't think we'll ever change the public's eye but we can damn sure try to avoid it try to place your dogs in places I mean that's the whole reason for this kennel design here is to try to hide them not because I'm doing anything wrong but because of people that are uneducated and can't mind their own damn business from the outside of this kennel you don't see anything but a privacy fence because i'm not trying to bring any unwanted attention any situations that might have me you know in a bind or accused of anything just because of the breed of dogs that i raise so I mean, I don't know what to say, you guys. Other than God bless you. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of who can see your dogs. Pick up your dog shit so the neighbors don't fucking say, yeah, that yard stinks or I can smell that yard. And make sure your water's clean. Make sure, like I say, we got to live under some different laws. We are scrutinized more than any other dog breeder of any other breed. We can't even have a scratch on our dogs. So, God bless. Thank you again, all my subscribers. And uh, y'all just be mindful of, of everything. So, good night.